Hello and welcome to another review. This is a bit of an unconventional review, as the model I'll be showing you guys today isn't an official 12 volt set, but rather a build from the Ideas Book 7777. I bought almost all the parts a few months ago, and today the last few pieces came in, so I'm super excited to finally showcase this legendary steam engine to you. Okay, let's back up. What is 7777? It's an official LEGO 4.5 volt slash 12 volt Ideas Book from 1981 at the beginning of the Grey Era. This book showcases a ton of 12 volt photos for users to recreate, and there are models that have step-by-step -step instructions. Alongside the steam engine, the book has instructions for a few large engines, some freight wagons, and small trackside accessories such as buffers. However, out of all these models, this steam engine has become the most iconic of them, and for good reason. It uses many rare parts, some exclusive to 7750, meaning builders needed to have a copy of the already rare 7750 to take parts from. This means that back in the 80s, very few people actually made this engine. Today, it's rare to see this engine, since most people prefer to keep their copies of 7750 together. I'll explain more about how I got this engine later in the video. First though, I'll show you the details of the train and compare it to 7750. So here are the two legendary steam engines side by side, 7750 and 7777. So of course 7750 is the one with the stickers here, and then 7777 is this one, the larger one. I'll walk you through all the similarities and differences between these two engines, as well as reviewing uh, 7777, because I never showcased this on my channel before. So I'll start with what is, in my opinion, the most unique feature about 7777, the articulated wheelbase. So first I'll go with 7750, which is kind of the baseline here because this is the official 12 volt set. The wheelbase is pretty simple, it's just got these two swiveling bogies that are of course attached to the base plate with the bogie plates. However, 7777 has, it's a little bit hard to see on camera, but you can see that there's one main bogie here, and then this back section is a bogie with kind of leading and trailing wheels off the front and back. So you can see this is this part, these two wheels here, are solid, these are fixed together, and they're on this single bogey plate. However, the front and rear wheels, like you see right here, this can swivel off. Um, this is just attached with a two by two turntable. So this means that the engine can go around corners pretty easily. So it's got three big wheels, uh, the driving wheels, and then two leading wheels, and uh, two sets of leading wheels and one set of trailing wheels. And then it's got, of course, the buffers in the front and back. So that, in my opinion, is the single most unique feature about this set and what really makes it stand apart from any other engine because no other engine had this articulated wheelbase. And I think that makes it super cool. Uh, moving back to the part about the other part about the wheelbase, the tender, uh, you can see that 7750 just has the standard uh, motor inside the tender. And then 7777 also has a motor in the tender. The, they have a little bit of a... Um, different layout construction for the tender. I'll go over that a little bit later in the comparison. Uh, and then moving kind of to the front of the train, I'll spin these so that you can see them a little bit easier. Uh, 7750, again, is the kind of like the baseline, has a light prism in the front and then the round boiler um, and no elephant ears or anything. It's just got the, the prism and then, um, yeah, the boiler and one light in the middle. This one also has the light prism. This is hidden behind a slope, so that's a, that's a difference. And then it's got a light in here. This In this 7777, the top boiler light and both lights in the prism are do have light bricks behind them, whereas in 7750, only these two bottom lights are illuminated. So that's a cool feature of 7777 and that has all three lights illuminated on the front. Another difference is that 7777 has these elephant ears. These are just attached with uh, these two by four bricks that are kind of sticking out of here, and then you put this, these assemblies on top. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty cool. You can also see in, immediately on the top that 7750 has a really small smokestack. It's just a one by one round uh, round brick, but this one has two by two round brick, so it's a little bit of a wider smokestack. Moving back a little bit to the boiler kind of construction of the engines. Again, you can see the articulating wheelbase kind of when I move the train. This is kind of hard to align all the wheels correctly if it's not on the track. So moving back to the boiler, 7750 has a very solid boiler. You can see it's got these blocks on the side and a real steam engine. I think these would be like walkways for people to uh, do maintenance on or, any, or something like that. Uh, it's got these very solid blocks on the sides and then it's got, uh, yeah, the standard slopes on the top and then hoses and then like steam domes as well. 7777, uh, I like, what I like about this boiler is that it of course kept the hoses from 7750. Uh, these are the exact same hoses. These, these specific ones are actually originally from a copy of 7750. Um, so yeah, it's got like kind of blocks in the sides as well, but these are just, these are not um, 
protruding from the boiler like the ones in 7750 are. And the interesting thing as well is that the bottom of this boiler is completely open, like you can see right through it. If I put my hand behind there, you can kind of see that right through the opening there. So that's open, and you can even see actually right here where my finger is, that's the cable for the bottom light that's in this light prism. Uh, so yeah, the bottom of the boiler is open, and then this one has a little bit like, more details on the side, so it has these like slopes and then um, bricks, and it's got these round bricks as well that are kind of supporting the hose holders, which are one by two Technic bricks, just like 7750. Now moving back to the cabin, 7750 first. Uh, this is a closed cabin, so it doesn't have an opening in the back, but it does have these opening doors, which I, I actually like this detail. Now it's got some levers inside and a removable roof. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty pretty standard cabin. And then 7777, it doesn't have the, the doors on the sides. Instead, the back of the cabin is just open. You can see the minifigure in there. Um, Another difference is the kind of the, oh, and then 777, I should also mention, doesn't have a roof that just opens on top of tiles like that. Another difference that I should mention, that I should mention is the kind of window arrangement. So 7750, if I bring this a little bit closer, you can see it's got two of the narrow windows in back, two of the wide, and then one wide window on each side, and then another two narrow windows in the front here. It's a little bit hard to see. The narrow windows are, of course, a lot rarer than the wider ones. So in total, it's got four narrow windows and two wide ones. 7777, on the other hand, has only two of the narrow ones. You can see a little bit here in the front, um, but it has four wide ones, so two on each side. Uh, so in total, 7750 has more, like more value in terms of windows because it's got four of the rare ones and two of the more common ones. This one has two of the rare ones and four of the more common ones. So just the difference if you're building it. One reason why this in theory should be a little bit cheaper than 7750. And finally, moving back to the tender. Um, I don't think there's a ton to say here. They're pretty similar. Um, of course, they've got like different designs, but like they're tender, you can't really make them super different. Again, like 7750 has the red ladders on the sides and then black on the front and back. Um, and then like these slopes for the kind of coal filling station. 7777 is a little, bit, this tender is a little bit more blocky. You can see it doesn't have this, like the gentle or slopes here. This is just a flat back to the um, outlet for coal. And then, yeah, it doesn't have ladders in the front and back like 7750 does, but it does have these nice, these lad the ladders here are, um, I guess, decoration or for a fireman to go up and refill the engine with coal. Um, and then there's also a little platform here for you can put it you can probably put a second minifigure here standing so yeah those are i think that's pretty much everything about these two engines that i wanted to mention oh yeah of course 7750 also has stickers uh because it's an actual set this one does not have stickers and I, to my knowledge they never made any official stickers for 7777 uh, so yeah that's the comparison between these two engines um, and now I'm going to explain the pricing, my opinion, and uh, and the video on this nice steam engine. Pricing for this model is not so straightforward, since this isn't an official set. If you add up average market value for all the parts on Bricklink, the total comes out to around 375 to 400 US dollars before tax and shipping. The common parts such as basic bricks and slopes are cheap, but as I mentioned, there are some extremely rare parts as well, such as the red motor, big red wheels, red bogey plates, and black windows. On average, you'll probably pay at least $400 for this engine in, on mainstream sites such as eBay and Bricklink. Occasionally, there will be listings for the complete engine, but most likely you'll have to piece it together. I bought all of the parts individually for mine, see this video, and in total ended up paying around $450, including tax and shipping. That was with the red motor I paid nothing for, since I fixed my broken one. Overall, I think the steam engine is truly deserving of its cult status, just like 7750. It has a slew of 12 volt area exclusive parts, and is the longest 12 volt steam engine. The articulated wheelbase is super unique. While I do love this engine, I wouldn't recommend it to a new 12 volt collector, since acquiring all the parts means you'll have to scour Bricklink and place many orders, easier to just get a complete set. However, once you have some experience with 12 volt trains and you're interested in this engine, I would definitely say go for it. Just like 7750, it can easily pull freight or passenger wagons and is certainly an impressive engine on any layout. That concludes my review and comparison of the 7777 steam engine. Thanks for watching. This engine will be featured in Layout 15. I've cleaned off my table and will be working on constructing the layout very soon. Also, a very special thanks to Gabrielle C, my first channel member. 
Some of you may have noticed that it launched channel memberships. I'll make a standalone video on that shortly. See you in the next one.